I'm glad you mentioned uh, something about impediments. Another thing we know is infrastructure. And the mineral yeah. resource business is very energy intensive. Yeah. So how can this sector thrive now with the current state of power that we have? Infrastructure is a major issue. You know, for Nigeria to be serious about mining, the railway line or corridor need to pass through major mining sites in the country because most of these minerals are bulky and you need to move it from one point to the other. You mentioned power. We need to get our power right. Even, even apart from power, there are issues about environment. You know, the byproducts or some of the derivatives from this mine, uh, from the, from these mines and minerals are very toxic and very de de dangerous to the environment. We don't want to repeat the mistakes of the Niger Delta. Not, not just the environment, even to the people who are mining the people, for this, the, this exactly. particular so mineral. The standardization is not yet tightened very well. Of course, the laws are there, but you, you read the law, is, it glows over a lot of things. And you see a lot of emotions and sentiment embedded, embedded in, in that law. And investors are very, very, because the ease of doing business in Nigeria is a little bit not where it should be. And if we work hard to clean up this sector, we are very confident that the potential of this sector is by far more than the potential of the uh, oil and gas sector, even when the price of uh, crude oil is at a peak. So, how should Nigeria proceed now with the reforms in this sector? What are the quick wins? You already mentioned that maybe a regulatory body should be formed. Mm -hmm. uh, it shouldn't just be the Federal Ministry of Solid Minerals and Mines that will totally be regulating that environment. Exactly. We should have a regulator formed. So there is a pseudo regulator right now. That's the, the, the Cadestra. Uh, minerals and cadastra office in Abuja, but it is just weak. You know, we need to strengthen that with some amendment, amendment of law. That's the Mining Act of 2007. There is also an issue of creating the, a, a strong regulator and also reducing the power of the minister himself. In some of this, he is not going to be the minister, the policy maker, and the regulator at the same time. He will not be able to money to that sector. Um, the Constitution need to be amended. Unfortunately, you know, we thank God that the last three uh, legislative um, uh, uh, sessions have been looking at amending the amending Constitution. Constitution need to be amended such that the issue of all the mines, uh, minerals, and resources embedded in the ground, in the ocean, in the sea, are for the federal government. We need to give this thing to the states where they belong, so that investment will be allowed to flow. Another issue is this issue of community consent. We've seen situations where particular minerals span across about 20 communities, and it's only one or two communities that are willing to give their consent. It's a challenge. And sometimes the second, the third community will tell you that this mineral is passing through the ancestral home or um, uh, uh, graveyard. You know, the current uh, law we have says that you cannot mine 50 meters close to a graveyard, a sanctuary, a church, a mosque. You know, so we see a lot of laws that are even conflicting with the constitution of Nigeria. And the constitution says, wherever, whenever an existing law conflicts with Nigerian constitution, Nigerian constitution takes uh, precedence. So some of these things need to be cleaned because it is uh, affecting the willingness and readiness of investors to come into that sector and make the type of investment. South Africa is thriving under under solid minerals. Some African countries are doing very well, employing the highest the highest number of labor. We have more than uh, more more, more uh, um, num the number of uh, minerals in the country: the bitumen, the the, the gold, the, uh, and, and all of this. About forty-three minerals, nine of them at a strategic quantity. Yeah, so we have coal, we have bitumen, iron ore, limestone, barites, lead, zinc, you can keep and gold. mentioning all of them. You know, at a huge quantity estimated, but wanted to be proven proven reserve. Apart from that, if we get it right, it's not just that we're selling and getting, receiving efforts for foreign currency, but we are generating jobs. And we're also able to power our industry because a whole lot of input, we're talking about FX is very scarce now. We cannot import a lot of uh, input. What are we importing? Most of the things we're importing for industry are output of solid mineral sector. So if we're serious about fixing our FX challenge, we need to look at fixing all of the impediments that uh, uh, discourage investors from uh, uh, bringing their huge dollar into the minerals and mine sector. So, Dr. Vincent, just to get a final word from you on this matter, will any government unable to make the iron and steel sector, for instance, stop producing, claim success, and solid minerals turn around? <laughs> well, uh, like I said before, the solid minerals in Nigeria will have about uh, 43. Iron and iron ore is just one of them. But because of the leadership position we were occupying in that sector to be very difficult to claim success. The Ajokuta still need to come 
live on stream if we want to power our rail sector we talk about rail you need serious iron we talk about construction real estate you need serious iron you know so but apart from that something need to happen to a bit to men are good and everything so if we get the legal environment very right and regulatory environment we will not only be unlocking the iron ore but we'll be, we'll be unlocking a whole lot of minerals at the same time to power industry and also to generate more effects into the country but then do you think nigeria is ready to make those tough choices needed to make sure that this particular sector not just just the sector but those other sectors that are supposed to diversify the economy away from oil begin to pick up we don't agree that those ones are tough are, cho are to choices that are tough we are there we don't even have options so it's not a tough choice it's a choice or it's an action that must be taken if we are serious oh dr wani thank you so much for speaking with us this morning and giving us your perspectives on that matter thank you very much talking about ma mineral resource management with dr vincent wani the director of research and advocacy with the lagos chamber of commerce and industry